The French horn is a brass instrument made of tubing wrapped into a coil with a flared bell. The double horn in FB flat is the horn most used by professional bands and orchestras. A musician who plays any kind of horn is called a horn player. Pitch is controlled through the adjustment of lip tension in the mouthpiece and the operation of valves by the left hand, which route the air into extra tubing. Most horns have lever-operated rotary valves, but some, especially older horns, use piston valves and the Vienna horn uses double piston valves, or pump and valves. The backward-facing orientation of the bell relates to the perceived desirability to create a subdued sound in concert situations. In contrast to the more piercing quality of the trumpet, a horn without valves is known as a natural horn, changing pitch along the natural harmonics of the instrument. Pitch may also be controlled by the position of the hand in the bell, in effect reducing the bell's diameter. The pitch of any note can easily be raised or lowered by adjusting the hand position in the bell. Three valves control the flow of air in the single horn, which is tuned to F or less commonly B flat. The more common double horn has a fourth valve, usually operated by the thumb, which routes the air to one set of tubing tuned to F or another tuned to B flat. Triple horns with five valves are also made, tuned in F B flat, and a descant E flat or F. Also common are descant doubles, which typically provide B flat and alto F branches. This configuration provides a high-range horn while avoiding the additional complexity and weight of a triple. A crucial element in playing the horn deals with the mouthpiece. Most of the time, the mouthpiece is placed in the exact center of the lips, but because of differences in the formation of the lips and teeth of different players, some tend to play with the mouthpiece slightly off-center. Although the exact side-to-side -side placement of the mouthpiece varies for most horn players, the up-and-down placement of the mouthpiece is generally two-thirds on the upper lip and one-third on the lower lip. Usually, in order to play higher octave notes, the pressure exerted on the lips from the mouthpiece is increased. But, although some pressure is needed, excessive pressure is not desirable. Playing with excessive pressure makes the playing of the horn sound forced and harsh as well as decreases endurance of the player by about half. Name The name, French horn, is found only in English, first coming into use in the late 17th century. At that time, French makers were preeminent in the manufacture of hunting horns, and were credited with the creation of the now familiar, circular, hoop, shape of the instrument. As a result, these instruments were often called even in English by their French names, trompe de chasse or corps de chasse. When crooks were invented in order to make such horns playable in different keys, they were first devised by German makers. And so the national designators, French and German, came to be used to distinguish the simple hunting horn from the newer horn with crooks, which in England was also called by the Italian name corno chromatico. More recently, French horn is often used because the word horn by itself, even in the context of musical instruments, may refer to nearly any wind instrument. Nevertheless, the adjective has normally been avoided when referring to the European orchestral horn. Ever since the German horn began replacing the French-style instrument in British orchestras around 1930, the International Horn Society has recommended since 1971 that the instrument be simply called the horn. There is also a more specific use of French horn to describe a particular horn type, differentiated from the German horn and Vienna horn. In this sense, French horn refers to a narrow bore instrument with three perinet valves. It retains the narrow bell throat and mouthpipe crooks of the orchestral hand horn of the late 18th century, and most often has an ascending third valve. This is a whole tone valve arranged so that with the valve in the up position, the valve loop is engaged, but where the valve is pressed the loop is cut out, raising the pitch by a whole tone. General Characteristics the horn is the third highest sounding instrument group in the brass family, below the cornet and the trumpet. Horns are mostly tuned in B flat or F, or a combination of both. 
In some traditions, novice players use a single horn in F, while others prefer the B-flat horn. The F horn is used more commonly than the B-flat horn, especially in school bands. Compared to the other brass instruments in orchestras and concert bands, it has a very different mouthpiece, but has the widest usable range, approximately four octaves, depending on the ability of the player. To produce different notes on the horn, one must do many things, the seven most important are pressing the valves, holding the appropriate amount of lip tension, raising the soft palate, positioning the tongue, lowering the larynx, blowing air into the instrument, and placing the hand in the bell. More lip tension and faster air produces higher notes. Less lip tension and slower air produces lower notes. The right hand, usually cupped at a 3 o'clock position in the bell, can lower the pitch, depending on how far into the bell the player puts it, by as much as a semitone in the instrument's mid-range. The horn plays in a higher portion of its overtone series compared to most brass instruments. Its conical bore is largely responsible for its characteristic tone, often described as mellow. Today, music for the horn is typically written in F and sounds a perfect fifth lower than written. The limitations on the range of the instrument are primarily governed by the available valve combinations for the first four octaves of the overtone series and after that by the ability of the player to control the pitch through their air supply and embouchure. The typical written ranges for the horn start at either the F sharp immediately below the bass clef or the C an octave below middle A. The standard range starting from a low F-sharp is based on the characteristics of the single horn in F, but there is a great deal of music written beyond this range, on the assumption that players are using a double horn in F-B-flat. Its valve combinations allow for the production of every chromatic tone from two octaves on either side of the horn's written middle C. Although the upper range of the horn repertoire rarely exceeds high C, skilled players can achieve yet higher pitches. Also important to note is that many pieces from the Baroque to Romantic periods are written in keys other than F. This practice began in the early days of the horn before valves, when the composer would indicate the key the horn should be in and the part would be notated as if it were in C. For a player with a valveless horn that is a help, showing where in the harmonic series a particular note is. A player with a modern instrument must provide the final transposition to the correct pitch. For example, a written C for horn in D must be transposed down a minor third and played as an A on an F horn. History as the name indicates, humans originally used to blow on the actual horns of animals before starting to emulate them in metal. This original usage survives in the shofar, a ram's horn, which plays an important role in Jewish religious rituals. Early metal horns were less complex than modern horns, consisting of brass tubes with a slightly flared opening wound around a few times. These early, hunting, horns were originally played on a hunt, often while mounted, and the sound they produced was called a recheat. Change of pitch was affected entirely by the lips. Without valves, only the notes within the harmonic series are available. The horn was used, among other reasons, to call hounds on a hunt and created a sound most like a human voice, but carried much farther. In orchestral settings, the horn often invoked the idea of the hunt, or, beginning in the later Baroque, determined the character of the key being played or represented nobility, royalty, or divinity. Early horns were commonly pitched in B-flat alto, A, A-flat, G, F, E, E-flat, D, C, and B-flat basso. Since the only notes available were those on the harmonic series of one of those pitches, they had no ability to play in different keys. The remedy for this limitation was the use of crooks, i.e., sections of tubing of differing length that, when inserted, altered the length of the instrument, and thus its pitch. Orchestral horns are traditionally grouped in two, high horn and low horn pairs. Players specialized to negotiate the unusually wide range required of the instrument. Formerly, in certain situations, composers called for two pairs of horns in two different keys. 
For example, a composer might call for two horns in C and two in E flat for a piece in C minor, in order to gain harmonics of the relative major unavailable on the C horns. Eventually, two pairs of horns became the standard, and from this tradition of two independent pairs, each with its own high and low horn, came the modern convention of writing the first and third parts above second and fourth. In the mid-18th century, horn players began to insert the right hand into the bell to change the length of the instrument, adjusting the tuning up to the distance between two adjacent harmonics depending on how much of the opening was covered. This technique, known as hand stopping, is generally credited to Anton Joseph Hampel around 1750, and was refined and carried to much of Europe by the influential Giovanni Punto. This offered more possibilities for playing notes not on the harmonic series. By the early classical period, the horn had become an instrument capable of much melodic playing. A notable example of this is the four Mozart horn concerti and concert rondo, wherein melodic chromatic tones are used. Owing to the growing prevalence of hand stopping and other newly emerging techniques, in 1818 the German makers Heinrich Stolzel and Friedrich Blumel patented the first valved horn, using rotary valves. Piston valves were introduced in France about 1839 by François Perinet. Valves were initially intended to overcome problems associated with changing crooks during a performance. Valve's unreliability, musical taste, and players' distrust, among other reasons, slowed their adoption into mainstream. Some musicians, specializing in period instruments, still use a natural horn when playing in original performance styles, seeking to recapture the sound and tenor in which an older piece was written. The use of valves, however, opened up a great deal more flexibility in playing in different keys, in effect. The horn became an entirely different instrument, fully chromatic for the first time. Valves were originally used primarily as a means to play in different keys without crooks, not for harmonic playing. That is reflected in compositions for horns, which only began to include chromatic passages in the late 19th century. When valves were invented, generally, the French made smaller horns with piston valves and the Germans made larger horns with rotary valves. In English, the term French horn is often used because the word horn by itself, even in the context of musical instruments, may refer to nearly any wind instrument with a flared exit for the sound. Nevertheless, the International Horn Society has recommended since 1971 that the instrument be simply called the horn, despite the ambiguity of the term.